finish line around that corner, rolling on the tracks. It's great to see you heaving and happily hauling. It won't be long till you are back. We're on our way. We have our fare down to the station. The engines are on. To see the steam team are happily hooping the strongest engines, hauling all those times. We're on our way, we have our fare down to the station. The engines are on. To know you're coming, we're counting on you. Every day our mail gets through. We're on our way. We have our fare down to the station. The engines are all there. Every day there's so much to do. Hey Thomas, we know the jumble through. Duh, the Great Western Engine worked hard in the yard at the big station. Sometimes he pulled coaches, sometimes he pushed trucks. But whatever the work, Duck got the job done without fuss. One morning, Duck was resting in the shed when Sir Topham Hatt arrived. Your work in the yard has been good. Would you like to have a branch line for your own? Oh, yes, please, sir. So Duck took charge of his new branch line. The responsibility delighted him. The branch line runs along the coasts by sandy beaches till it meets a port where big ships come in. Duck enjoyed exploring every curve and corner of the line. Sea breezes swelled as smoke high into the air and his green paint glistened in the sunlight. It just does like beyond politic. Well, you know what they say, boy. A change is as good as a rest. Soon, Duck was busier than ever. Sir Topham Hatt was building a new station at the port. And Duck took the trucks wherever they were needed. Bertie looked after Duck's passengers, and the other engines helped too, but the work took a long time. Noise and dust filled the air. Don't worry, the station's nearly finished. And all on time too. Duck felt his responsibility deeply and talked endlessly about it. You don't understand, Donald, on how much Sir Topham Hat relies on me. Fuck. I. <sighs> I'm Great Western, and I... Quack, quack, quack. What? You heard quack, quack, you go. Sounds like you had an egg laid. Now wheezed and let an engine sleep. Quack yourself. Duck was most upset. The next morning, he spoke to his driver what happened last night. Donald says I quack. As if I lay an egg. Huh! Quack, do you? He whispered something to Duck and his driver. They were going to play a trick on Donald and pay him back for teasing Duck. The engines were busy for the rest of the day and nothing more was said. Not even a quack. 
That night, when Donald was asleep, Duck's driver and fireman popped something into his water tank. The next morning, when Donald stopped for water, he found that he had an unexpected passenger on board. A small white duckling popped out of his water tank. Now, do, who's behind this? The duckling was tame. She shared the fireman's sandwiches and had a ride on Donald's tender. The other engines enjoyed teasing Donald about her. But eventually, she grew tired of travelling and hopped off at the station. And there she stayed. That night, Donald's driver and fireman got busy, and in the morning, when Duck's crew arrived to look over, they laughed their heads off. Look, Duck! Look what's under your bunker! A nest with an egg in it! Donald opened a sleepy eye. Well, well, well. You must have laid it in the night, Duck. All unbeknownst. Then Duck laughed too. You win, Donald. It'd take the better engine to get the better of you. There's a pond near the station. Here she swims and welcomes the trains as they pass by. The station master calls a dilly, but to everyone else, she is always Donald Duck.